Commissioner Stridland, can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can. Okay, where How are, we? are you, Mr. Chairman? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm um, a little under the weather. Yeah, that's what I heard. Hope you get to feeling better. We'll be starting just momentarily. Commissioner Woody's getting ready to come up the steps in just a second. Okay. All right. No problem. Call the meeting to order, uh, Jackson County Board of Commissioners. Uh, today being February the 1st, 2022. Uh, just to let everyone know that uh, Commissioner Stribling will be participating today via Zoom. So uh, he was not here in present in the boardroom, but he is on the screen uh, participating via Zoom. So at this time, I'll uh, ask for a uh, a motion to approve the agenda unless someone has any other additions. I'm going to approve the agenda. Okay. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed nay. Ayes have it. Next is the approval of the minutes. Uh, you should have had a copy in advance of the work session minutes from January the 11th and then the regular meeting minutes from January the 18th. I haven't had a chance to review those as distributed by the clerk. What's the pleasure of the board? Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve January the 11th and January 18th minutes. Okay, I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any questions or discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Ayes have it. Next is our administrative reports. I don't have anything to report this evening. Uh, Commissioner Jones, I'll start with you. Uh, no report tonight. Okay. Commissioner Woody? Um, yes, I had the privilege um, this past weekend of attending the um, Board of Directors meeting for the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners. And I um, am privileged to um, represent the seven Western counties. And um, Chairman Matt Mahan has done this before and actually been an officer in this organization. And it's a wonderful opportunity for us to network with other commissioners from across the state. And um, I was eating breakfast Saturday morning and talking to um, the county manager from another county and a couple of the people that represent um, <clears throat> the association and so they saw my name tag and said Jackson County, and they said, oh, Darlene Fox is your finance director. <laughs> and I said, yes, she is. Now, without any solicitation, they went on to brag on the work that Darlene Fox does. These were state people and knew of her integrity and just the diligence. I was so proud to be from Jackson County and I just wanted to express that to um, all of us. I think we are so blessed to have Darlene working on our behalf. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Commissioner Dietz. Only one thing. I was out around the county and town on Saturday after the night and during the snow. And I uh, just want to compliment our, all our maintenance and facility people. Uh, it was Saturday, and they were all out there working, trying to clean up around the building to make sure everything is the best shape it could be for all of us come Monday. Absolutely. Very good. Commissioner Striblin, do you have anything to report this evening? We've lost him on the Zoom call. Lost him on the Zoom call. Okay, maybe we can get him hooked back up. We'll move on to the county manager's report. Mr. Adams?
Yes, sir. You should have in front of you the report. I have the report on, on the screen here also. Uh, first item is our, our, our normal report in regards to zoning and building permits. In the month of December, the planning department issued three commercial zoning permits and one renovation uh, and addition permit. And code enforcement issued eight commercial permits and two reno renovation and addition permits. Um, also included in the packet is just a, a summary and description of each of the permits they're located and also their location. Uh, next item is the North Carolina Department of Transportation. Right there. North Carolina Department of Transportation will hold a one-day virtual event. It'll take place tomorrow, Wednesday, February 2nd. Uh, the resolution enactment for the Conrad G. Burrow Highway will take place at approximately 2.45 p.m. The public can view the live stream at the link that I've put on here. This is also online, but you also can just type this in if anybody's interested. You can go and watch that. Uh, once that's passed and DOT sets up the dedication time frame, I'll bring that information back to the board. And I spoke with... Um Miss Juanita Burrell uh, this past week when this uh, message came out from Raleigh asking if any of the family members would like to speak at this event and offered to uh, use the boardroom here as a, a place to zoom into the meeting and allow Miss Burrell a chance to speak and she has declined the opportunity and just felt like that she's very appreciative of everything's been done and uh, we'll just wait for this action to be taking place. Yes, sir. Uh, next item is that the, in regard to the American Rescue Plan Act, ARPA, uh, just as the board knows, but just letting the public know also, the U.S. Department of Treasury has issued its final rules regarding these funds. Uh, the final rules allow for flexibility up to $10 million when calculating revenue impacts of the pandemic. Uh, any funds saved utilizing this process must be used for general government purposes. Uh, Jackson County will receive $8,534,441 in these funds. Um, 3,384,149 of these funds have been committed. That leaves the 5,149,492 of these funds unallocated. I'm putting this issue on the upcoming work session. Also, it'll be an issue for the upcoming budget retreat. And what I'm just going ahead and getting the board, just, uh, if you would, start thinking in terms of your priorities, what I will do at our next budget, or excuse me, our next work session, I'll just bring back the original purposes of the funds, but also want to start getting input and ideas and concepts back from the board, general in nature about what your priorities may or may not be. And as we continue our meetings, uh, those priorities can get more specific. And so it's really just the start of a, you're not necessarily, I'm not asking you to show up next Tuesday with all the ideas of how to expend those funds. Uh, but I am asking you to start thinking about what your priorities are and you as a board can start discussing these priorities which eventually will allow staff to start bringing projects back to you. So I'll give you for example. Parks. Parks have been discussed, I know, internally about it as parks and priority. I need to hear that. We've talked about uh, broadband. You've talked about housing. You've talked about other safety concerns. These are the general things that I'm looking for from the board to start telling us, are these your priorities in moving forward with this? And this will allow us to, to bring back to you specific information. So, for example, when we get into our budget retreat, February 22nd, um, I will be bringing specific information in regards to um, some prior or priorities uh, discussed by this board. So, for example, uh, things such as a park in the Kuala Whittier area will be, I'll be coming back. We are ready to start openly discussing those issues. That will be brought to you in the February 22nd budget retreat. Uh, Dillsborough area in regards to that property will be specific. So we are ready to start moving forward and providing specific information to the board. But as it comes back to the American Rescue Plan Act, um, the board also, I'm just looking for the board to start giving us priorities of how you'd like to see those funds expended.
Next is the uh, update on construction. And I'm going to go ahead and just zoom back to the uh, pictures. Um, first night in the Animal Rescue Center, we're finally hitting to a point with, after the rain delays and the delays with the delivery of the building package, we're finally starting to get to a point where we are seeing some what I consider will notice progress. I decided to go ahead and just give the uh, civil engineer's report to the board. It provides updates in regards to they are now starting on the walking trails. I've already reported to the board. Our retaining walls are complete. And now where they're at is because they've finished the block work on the interior of the facility, um, the, the very heavy delivery packages are now going to cease. Now, I know other things are heavy, but, you know, a load of block is what can, can really tear up a site. Now that that's been delivered and the block work has been done, they're going to start uh, basically finishing out that site. They're already bringing in loads of gravel. It'll start turning it into a site where hopefully in the next couple of months we can start doing some site visits and so forth where it would not be so dangerous for people and then also clean up the site itself. Again, this is just showing you pictures of, of the trail that's going to the uh, dog park area. There has been significant grading in this back area. Uh, in order to get ADA accessibility back there, also to have some benches and so forth. It doesn't show the open grass area, but the dog park area will be back in here. Um, and so I'm just providing some of that information. You can also see the retaining walls are done. This is the side entry road here. This has now been traveled at this point. Uh, the front uh, area of the uh, Animal Rescue Center has been graveled, so again, the site will start getting cleaned up a little bit. Um, again, this is also just providing other site information. Hopefully, in the next couple months, or within the next month, you'll start seeing a lot of this get finished out where it's not just complete mud out there. Um, the other item, just wanted to show you just some information on the building. I just thought I'd throw in the previous drawings here so that if you go back and look at these pictures, it, it'll help you orientate yourself when you're looking at the pictures versus the building. Just a reminder, this is the, the Animal Rescue Center. This is the main entrance. This was going to be a community room here uh, where you have glass storefront. You have main entrance of the facility here. This is the main entrance for the Animal Rescue Center and the nonprofit. Um, this back area here. This is just giving you a different view. This is actually what will be according off from the public. This is where animal control will bring and bring in the animals themselves. We have an intake uh, area here and this part of the facility is also where we treat the animals. We can come in we'll give rabies shots and things of that nature. Just trying to give you an orientation. This is the, let me flip up, this is the back side of the facility. This is our straight run of indoor outdoor um, uh, dog pens, uh, animal pens here. And again, this is just giving you another angle here from the front. So I also want to just remind everybody of what the schematics looks like. So when I was telling you this is the back side of the facility of the indoor outdoor runs, what you're really looking is that. When I was telling you the glass storefront, when we were angled from this area, this is the glass storefront. And this was the intake area that I was describing to you that the animal control can come in and bring in the animals. We do have... Um, we do have uh, pen space there, but this is also where they provide medical assistance and so forth to the animals. Now, what I wanted to try to do is just give you actual pictures of the facility, uh, visual renditions that we had provided to you prior, and I'm just trying to show you now, a little hard to see probably from the public, but this is just the front view of that. You can see well behind that, that's where this glass storefront would be. So this is the storefront here that you would see right here, uh, the community meeting room. So just giving you actual pictures of the facility itself. This is basically bringing you to the other end where I was describing the animal control would bring in for the intake. Um, this is just trying to give you this side angle here. This would be the front entrance, front entrance area here. Um, Excuse me. This is also taking you to that intake and it's just showing you that this is the indoor outdoor facility here and then the intake facility itself. And then just wanted to show you that majority of the stud work, steel stud work on the interior and also the block work itself has been completed. 
So that's just showing you studs. But also here, this is the long run of the pins themselves on the interior. And then this just shows you the outdoor side of that just for, for everybody to view. Again, um, I'm pleased with the progress. Uh, hopefully when we get the site cleaned up and get gravel in there and get where we can basically get over there and actually start really seeing this facility come to fruition. Uh, the architects did meet with uh, the health department staff and animal control. Today, they are starting to go through the process of ordering the furniture itself, but also all of the equipment, specialized equipment that goes into the facility. So they've started that process today, and we are looking for a substantial completion date in the summer, uh, June, for this facility. Um, I yes, did have a question. In light of <clears throat> the conversations we've had about the pool becoming more expensive and even the Fairview um, building project, have have we had a lot of cost overruns with this project as well? Um, we've had some change orders, uh, but I'm, uh, I'm not going to I'm well within the budgeted contingency. Oh, good. Um, and so, again, I, I, I want to hold off. I'm somewhat superstitious. Uh, the final thing on the... Uh, We've got most of the, when, when you're dealing with a project like this, this is very civil intense in regards to grading and things of that nature. So I feel comfortable that we've gotten beyond, obviously, the large retaining wall, the small retaining wall. Um, now that we're putting gravel back in certain areas and we're getting compaction there, I'm feeling pretty comfortable there. I feel like we've worked out most of the issues on the walking trails, um, things that, that, for example, um, and I'm not sure if I've mentioned this to the board or not, the initial trail itself was going to be a combination. It's probably not the correct way to say it, but the best way I can explain it is the rock dust that, was, that we have on a lot of our other trails. Well, the contractor felt like, uh, especially when you got on top of that facility, um, they felt like uh, concrete would have been a better solution. And when they brought up that conversation with Chad Parker, our public works director, uh, he said, absolutely, maintenance would prefer concrete over the, uh, and I'm talking about sidewalks type of walking trails, versus the, um, the dust because of just maintenance issues. So things like that, we were able to swap that out with relatively no cost increase. But we did have some cost increase. What I'm attempting to do is this is a trail uh, with trails. You know, not everything has to be absolutely ADA compatible, but what we're doing is we're giving options for us to be ADA. So, for example, um, the idea for this facility is we are going to have ADA parking at the front end of the, uh, if we go back up to the, um, the trail engineering report, they mentioned this in their report, on the front end of this trail right here, let me find it, Right in here, so this is driving into the facility, so where, where I'm pointing is, is, has, is the way you would go into the SRC. We have enough space right in here. Instead of making ADA park over the facility, we're going to put some ADA parking here so that you can get out. And we feel comfortable with this trail. We can get you at least all the way to the dog park itself, ADA compliant. We also are going to pave this. We'll have... Uh, split rail fence along here. Uh, it'll look very nice as far as trails go. And so these are the types of issues that I'm telling you that we've been able to work through and work out that that have been some cost associated with this, but nothing uh, to the extent that is is we still got plenty of contingency within our budget. And so when you get to the top of the facility itself. You know, the original intent was never, as long as we're able to provide access to certain areas and, and certain ADA access, it was never to provide ADA accessibility for all the trails everywhere. It's, you, you don't do that in all, all, in all trails. But as we got to looking at the concrete solution and as we started looking at the top, um, did spend a little bit more time and rearranged, went out there and physically went out on site with the contractor, Chad Parker, my public work director did, and we had to resurvey out. And we feel like that at top, we can get the grade within that, that 
concrete walking to be ADA. Now, the access to the top at this point is not ADA, so we're not at this point planning on having everything ADA accessible to it, but in the future, if we deemed it necessary, then eventually we may have parking at top. Right now, we need to see what the demand is from, from the users of these facilities. But these are little things, I say little things, but I think long term, when you start looking at usage of the facility, and what we all hope for, obviously, is people to be out there with the dogs, using the dog park to walk and so forth. Uh, we will have lots of options with the walking side of this. And these are the issues now that we've really got finalized. And, and the reason I tell you this is because these are also the issues that when you get into civil work, that can cost a lot of money depending upon what you find under the ground. The last things that we really got to complete on the civil side of this is they're still, they still haven't finished uh, all the storm sewer. And the storm sewer, if you go through and read this report, it talks about what storm sewer has been installed and what still hasn't been installed. So there are still what I would consider your unknowns until you literally dig the ditch to put the storm sewer in. We ran into some issues with some of the storm sewers, but knock on wood, at this point, we feel comfortable moving forward. Right now, if we can get the site settled, then we'll deal with some change orders here and there uh, as far as the interior of the building, but, but hopefully it'll keep us well within project list. Hope that. Thank you. Yes, that's great news. Um, <clears throat> And now watch this next month. I'll run into the run into some issues, but hopefully we'll keep it well within budget. Um, next item is um, in regards to the Fairview press box. Um, I did put in here the the architect's report. Uh, basically, about fifty percent of the masonry block is complete. We have corrected water issues, if you recall before, I told you we ran into some groundwater. Uh, also, just a reminder, we did find another solution instead of the uh, a new water line all the way to the building. If you remember, that bid was $60,000. Um, right now, we've done about $10,000 worth of change orders in this project, uh, which is allowing us not to expend the $60,000 for the water line. So we feel like we're going to be able to uh, keep enough pressure in there. We're going to put a, a water bladder tank in there. I'm also, in this area of the picture, I'm also going ahead and getting it plumbed out. Um, if we ever do have to run a water line there, what I'm trying to do is get what I'm calling a dead water line plumbed out from this building back to a grass area so that for some reason or another we ever do have to run the water line to it. We don't have to cut back through the pavement and through the concrete and things of that nature. Um, also on this picture here, you can see the block. Uh, if you recall, part of this was buying storage containers uh, for storage for the nonprofits. Just want to show you, that's the if you wanted to know where it's located, that's the gravel area where we're going to locate those storage areas. And then just also what we're doing is we're doing some upgrades to the panel boxes and so forth and making sure that the panel boxes and so forth can handle um, uh, anything that we need to do with the lighting in the future. Just a reminder to everybody. Um, the next item is the, uh, the Jackson County Community Service Center. I showed this picture to you last time, but as you can see now, we've we've stained uh, the all of the trim work around the the center itself. It looks really good if you haven't gone out and looked at it. I just put this picture in to show you what it used to look like versus what it looks like now. We've also gotten the um, we've also gotten the uh, uh, flagpoles up. Um, we did in the contract itself. We did have power ran out for these flagpoles. As you know, if you if you put a flag up, you have to either light it or you have to take it down every day. So we did have power run out to those flagpoles. So as soon as we get everything hooked up, we can get the flag put there. Um, the the staff is working on interior signage. We're about done with that as far as getting it ordered. Exterior, what we're looking to do. Let me see if I can zoom in here to show you a little bit more. Um, a couple of things we're attempting to do is we need everybody, to, the public needs to enter into this parking lot. You know, there's two entry points to this parking lot. We're trying to avoid the public entering into the back 
parking lot. That's basically where employees park, and that's a employee entrance and exit point. And so when you start looking at signage to let everybody know, let the public know what services are in this building, um, if we, we believe if we put it on the side of the building here that it would encourage people to go into the wrong they wouldn't see the signage until they've passed the entrance point that we wanted to go into. And so what we decided to do, if we try to bring it down to this corner, it's going to uh, obstruct site views in regards to trying to pull out of that street. So we concluded if we put signage on this building itself, right in these areas, ultimately, and then also some smaller directional signs out on the road, it just takes you to the main entrance. What this will do is it'll give you the knowledge that everybody needs about what services are in there. Um, but it will also um, just fit in with the building and work well. Uh, what we'll end up doing on this side, uh, since, as you know, the health department functions actually are mostly on this side in the base. What we'll see is Department of Public Health here and their logo here. And then what we'll have on this side is we'll have a title permit permit center okay and then we'll have uh, code enforcement planning and environmental health listed underneath it and so we are going to avoid and i would recommend this that we're going to avoid the word one-stop permitting because um, we handle most of the stops there but as, as you recall if you're a developer you still have to come if you buy a piece of property, you still have to come to the Register of Deeds and record. You still have to do certain things at the tax office. So we're avoiding the words one stop. So it is just a permit center that will go right there. So, um, And we'll start working on that signage and hopefully get it up there as soon as possible. Um, final item, um, well, before we jump to this, uh, Clark Nexon does uh, they're continuing on developing the indoor pool. Um, it's anticipated that we'll be opening bids in June of 22. And so just letting the board know we're going to need to move forward with contracting with financial consultants and bond council. And so you'll see when you see next week's work session agenda, you'll see that um, we have a bond council uh, contract on that agenda. You'll see the topic of a financial consultant on that. Uh, Darlene and I are still reviewing uh, proposals at this point. Hopefully, we'll be ready to bring that to you. I, I need to go ahead and let you know, these, these costs, if you recall, I believe we discussed this before, when you issue bonds, uh, the cost of closing of, of everything is going to run between two hundred dollars to $250,000. Uh, when you issue bonds, issuing bonds is more expensive than how we have been borrowing money, which is through installment purchases and so forth. Um, just a reminder for the board and for the public, too, uh, we're, when we do installment purchases, which is basically a fancy mortgage, okay, uh, we're limited to $10 million in a single fiscal year in order to retain tax exemption. And so why is that important? It's because we want to pay 2 and 3% interest, and we don't want to be in the same field or world as private as you and me, where we would end up paying higher interest rates. And so that's the value of going out to a bond, a GL bond. We're using the taxing power of the citizens to secure these bonds, and that's what allows us to get the better interest rate, get a really good interest rate. Um, and we're thinking it may be around 2%, um, a really good interest rate on these bonds. And so just, just for one, letting you know these contracts are – uh, we're probably looking initially about $100,000 worth of consulting fees. And we need to move quickly on it because what we have to do is go to the bonding rating agencies. We have to go through all this process in order for us to be ready to sell bonds in June when we need the money to actually sign the contract. Um, the final item is um, security cameras have been installed at the uh, Jackson County Library Historical Courthouse. I just wanted to provide some pictures. I, I, I was very pleased how it came out. Uh, I know this is sideways, but I wanted to show you, you know, how well these cameras blend in with the, uh, you know, we, we, I know we all want to be very conscious about obviously just this whole viewscape of this entire area here. And so we have eight cameras coming up and down. The way, if you'll notice how this camera is, you have to zoom in here. Um, 
I just want to show you. All right. Well, it's hard to tell, but you can see that camera is facing to the left and this camera is facing to the right. The way these cameras work, there's a 180 degree viewpoint. So what happens is, is when, I, when I'm zooming out here, the coverage area here is completely from the top of the stairwell to that whole main entrance there, all the way down to the fountain area. And then what happens is, is when you look at this, I'm going to point at this landscape here, these cameras on this side are covering everything from bottom to top to the right. And these cameras on this side are covering everything from, let's say, the top to bottom. I'm going to top of the stairwell to the bottom of the stairwell, including, including the fountain to the left. So pretty much what we have now is covered of the entire lawn area, stairwell, and the fountain. And, uh, um, and so I was just pleased at how well it looked, how well it turned out. You would never, unless you're looking for it, you'd never even know it's there. And Mr. Chairman, that's my report. Any other questions for the manager concerning the report? And we do have someone signed up for public comment, sir. Before we go to public comment, uh, Commissioner Striblin, are you still with us? I am, Commissioner. I uh, just have on, have you on mute, and I'm um, had, having a little bit of internet problem at my house here. Okay. Well, we know you all of a sudden got dropped off, and I wanted to give you an opportunity. Did you have any a report that you wanted to issue today? I'm assuming that you don't have anything, any comments from the commissioner report. Okay, we're going to move on then to our next item on the agenda. And that is the informal comments by the public. And as our manager indicated, we do have uh, one person that signed up, someone very familiar, Ms. Jackie Moore. And I think she wants to okay. educate us a little bit on an upcoming new sport. And I guess it's not too new, but uh, very exciting information. You gave us at the... No, this a little different. Okay. There you go. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, it's not too new. Oh, all right. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm Jackie Moore, and um, I got the, low, the short straw, so that's why I'm here tonight. Um, these are the pickleball folks that are supporting me, but there are several that are online um, today, tonight that are sitting in. So we really appreciate the opportunity to um, be here tonight to ask the Jackson County Commissioners <clears throat> to support the Jackson County Park and Recreation's 2022 budget, um, adding convertible pickleball tennis nets at Mark Watson Park and adding pickleball lines to two tennis courts. A presentation was made to the Jackson County Park and Recreation Advisory Board on January 20th where the board approved convertible nets and added pickleball lines in the Jackson County Park and Recreation 2022 budget. The pickleball community wants to thank the Jackson County Park and Rec especially Rusty for supporting pickleball and Dora for teaching pickleball classes in the spring and the fall this past year and a half. In our, in our little town, in Dora's classes, we had 33 new players. Most of them have continued to play to this day. We have approximately 109 people that play pickleball in Jackson County regularly. We have beginners, intermediate, and advanced players. On Wednesday, January 19th, and there's a few photos in there behind um, this, we had 18 people show up at Mark Watson to play pickleball on two courts. Several used the far courts with no pickleball lines just so they could play. On Saturday, January 22nd, the existing courts were full and seven players waited to get a turn on the court. There are new people showing up to play every week as the popularity of pickleball continues to grow. For the last several years, the sport of pickleball has been dubbed the fastest growing sport in America, according to the 2019 Sports and Fitness Industry Association. 
there were approximately 3.3 million players in the United States. In 2020, they reported that pickleball grew to 4.2 million players in the United States, an incredible growth rate of 21.3% from 2019. Pickleball is phenomenally a well-designed game. Every aspect of the sport can be enjoyed on a basic level and by anyone. The requirements are easy to fill, but can be taken to higher levels of play when, when desired. <clears throat> Pickleball is important to many of us because it builds community with people you would have never met. Playing pickleball allows you to work on your balance, your agility, your reflexes, your hand-eye coordination, and cardio without putting excessive strains on your body. In conclusion, pickleball has exploded in interest in play here in Jackson County. Pickleball attracts players of all ages, the young and the old, and is especially popular among seniors. It is an, an important social and physical activity for our citizens. We appreciate and support um, the Jackson County Commissioner's willingness to back the sport of pickleball by supporting the Park and Rec 2022 budget, which includes the convertible pickleball nets and adding pickleball lines to two courts at Mark Watson Park. Currently, and you'll see the petition that you have with you, there have been 111 individuals sign this petition to support this endeavor. Our community is excited to enjoy the, to enjoy the health, social, and economic benefits this sport provides. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Any questions? Um, I just had one <clears throat> comment I wanted to make. Um, my husband is on this list and, and really enjoys pickleball. He got an email asking for money so that a group could come and present a request to the Board of Commissioners. And we were both very concerned that someone was asking for money to like for mm -hmm. you to just come. Any citizen can come and make a request at any time and there's no, there should not be any cost involved. Will you address that, Terry? Yeah, it sounds like it's a fraudulent email. Mm -hmm. um, it'd be good to know where it came from. Okay, He's, he sent it to Dora. Mm -hmm. But I just... I just wanted to make it clear in the public right. so that everyone would know if they got that email, that was not something that is um, right. required. required right, right. And nor did we set that up. Yeah. So thank you for announcing that. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Anything else? Well, we'll be looking forward to taking a look at this through the budget process. Okay. And getting a pickleball lesson in. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I might take y'all on. Thank you all for coming. Absolutely. You need to keep active. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys. Thank you. <laughs> it's a it's a it looks like a wiffle ball, but it's harder and smaller. It's about this big. And it has holes in it, but it's hard plastic. Well, it a paddle that looks like a ping pong paddle, only about twice as big. Or a pickle paddle. I have no idea. Well, that's a good question. We need to research that. Well, they use the same lines as she asked them. Do they use the same lines they do on a tennis court? No, it's smaller. Yeah. yeah, I think, and that's part of the request. It would, if they do this, they'd have to add some additional lines. It's a smaller court, so they could clarify where the pickleball court is. Boy, said you, when you get a chance, go over to Mark Watson and and just walk into the tennis courts, and you'll see where the lines have have already been painted on professionally. But then you'll see the other two courts where um, they've chalk lined in. <laughs> Yeah. where they can play on the other two and you'll it's pretty obvious once you see it you'll see it's just a smaller court when you go there and look at it okay okay we'll move on to our new business the first item is the southwestern north carolina home consortium board of directors this is an appointment we will recognize our county manager mr adams to sort of highlight the purpose of this appointment and what this person will be doing 
Yep, just a reminder to the board that uh, the board uh, agreed and went forward and joined the Southwestern North Carolina Home Consortium Board of Directors. As you can see from the, from the letter from Carolyn here, that they are looking for this board to appoint its member to this consortium. Uh, just a reminder, you basically have Haywood County, who basically is the lead agent. Uh, the way these federal dollars worked, you had to have a county government as the lead agent. So they agreed to be the lead agent. They're using our lead entity. They're using Southwestern Commission to be the lead agent in this conversation. And ultimately, all the counties and municipalities within this area are being asked to, to make an appointment to serve this board. Uh, Carolyn has put down or shown you the amount of money made available. Um, and I put this under new business. Uh, this will eventually turn into just an ongoing appointment for the Board of Commissioners. Um, but you can see the purpose is to increase the supply of new rental housing, increase the supply of new homes for ownership, preserve and rehabilitate existing housing stock, provide home ownership and rent assistance, and provide homeless and housing. Um, one other thing to just to note, if you recall on the agreement that came before the board, all these projects have to be generated locally and they require a match, okay? So what happens is, is whether it be Jackson County or Haywood County or Macon County, it really needs, to, the projects, if you want this funding to go towards it, needs to be driven locally and taken to this board with the understanding that locally you would match whatever program that you're trying to present to the board itself. Um, I can let the, the commissioners know that um, we do currently have a staff driven housing committee in which um, we have participation with staff and we do have our, our planning director who is also involved in this that um, that is the lead for our staff housing committee that ultimately may be a good fit for this appointment. Um, the reason I say that, from a local standpoint, from a governing body standpoint, any project that would have to go, that eventually goes to them, would have to come to you for approval because it would require some type of match. Okay. Now is this the same group that is doing, no, never mind. That, I know that's Mountain Projects, the four homes that we've got, okay. No. So there's 542,000, um, and then there's some American Risk ARP money, and it's it's going to be used for one, two, three, four, five, six counties, and that's annually. It's seven counties and the Kuala boundary. Well, it's it's the 542s annually. I don't believe the 1.9 is, and then yes, it's not only the counties, but it's also all the municipalities in these counties are eligible also. So. If we had a project, we'd, it'd probably be, behoove us to work with the municipalities and even a neighboring county if whatever project we deem, we probably have a better chance on getting the, the, the funding. Um, it, is, it looks like it's, if you were to divide that up between seven, eight entities, you know, there's not, well, there's not a lot of money to, to do a major project, but if we could partner, that, it might uh, make a project more doable. That's correct, yes, sir. And then there is the match. Right. So, yeah. Yes. Which does spread it a little more. But. So the request today for this, um, the re reason why this is on our agenda is to make an appointment to this board uh, and our manager has a recommendation uh, for an appointee. Isn't that correct? Yes. I, I if the board wishes for a recommendation, I'd recommend Mike Poston, the planning director, to serve as Jackson County's representative on this board. Given the, his connection with our local uh, housing committee. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I think he also is privy to a lot of our conversations going forward and in the past. So that's helpful. Yes. So would someone like to put that in the form of a motion to appoint Mike Poston to this consortium board of directors? I move that we appoint Mike Poston to the consortium board of directors. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Any question or discussion? Madam Clerk, if you'd call the roll, please. 
Commissioner D. Yes. Commissioner Woody. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Stribling. Yes. Yes. Motion carries. Okay. So next is the appointment section. Uh, first up is item two. This is the Equalization and Review Board. Uh, this is a very important board. All our boards are important, but this board has a very uh, tough job every year to meet uh, by statute to review uh, tax appraisals um, as far as our appraising process goes to generate the appraisals for uh, the taxing purpose for Jackson County for county government. And this board uh, all have agreed to serve again, which is a huge advantage because this, this board requires a lot of training, uh, having the knowledge and experience that goes along with having served. And we have several individuals on this board who have served numerous terms. So they bring a lot of knowledge to the table and being able to perform this task. So they have all agreed to serve again for 2022 and it is also, once we reappoint and make these appointments, uh, we're also asked to select the chairperson. And currently that chairperson is uh, Gail Cooper. So I think that's what's being requested of the board today uh, to make these appointments and then to also designate a chair. And vice chair. And vice chair, okay, and the vice chair as well. And the vice chair is Mr. Robert Edwards. So is, would someone like to Make a motion concerning these appointments. I'd like to make a motion. Okay, go ahead, sir. Are you, are you moving to reappoint these individuals and the chair, vice chair, to yeah. remain as is? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. I'm kind of going in and out. Okay, that's fine. So, Commissioner Striblin has made a motion to reappoint these five individuals and also reappoint uh, Gail Cooper as chair and Robert Edwards as vice chair. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Any question or discussion? If not, Madam Clerk, if you'd call the roll, please. Commissioner Stribling? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Woody? Yes. Commissioner Deeks? Yes. Chairman McMahon? Yes. Motion carries. Next is item three, the Juvenile Crime Prevention Council. We that is why I'm here. That is why I'm standing here. Is uh, this is something that is normally brought to you by your attorney, Miss Baker, on an annual basis. Uh, she is extremely involved with that board as the chair of the board, uh, and she actually uh, is on that board as the county manager representative. The Juvenile Crime Prevention Board uh, it consists of 25 members. And it has uh, various members on there that that suggest to be put on there. And, and specifically, there are seven slots that can be appointed by the county commissioners. You currently have five of those slots filled. And so, um, Ms. Tucker, Ms. Gary Tucker, my, my executive assistant, she has expressed interest to participate in that board and also provide some administrative support to that board they have minutes, okay? Um, and so um, what I am looking to try to do is to make Ms. Tucker a member of the board. And then that way the board can provide staff support to the board in general, or excuse me, Carrie can uh, provide staff support to the board in general, and also partner with, with Heather here to basically help that board run smoothly. So, what I'm trying to do at this point is come up with a way to make her a member of the board itself. So there's two, and I'm talking about Miss Carrie Tucker, and there's two ways you can do this. One is, is the board of commissioners, she could be one of your representatives, um, or you could appoint Miss Baker as your representative, which would vacate the slot of the county manager representative, and then I can make Carrie my representative on the board, meaning the, I appoint somebody to be on that board too. So what I'm requesting is, is that um, I think to make things simple, if, if it pleases the board, I would request that you appoint Ms. Heather Baker as one of your seven slots to be represented on that board, which would allow me to put Ms. Tucker on the board under my appointed power. If that 
I'm trying to get the help to that board. I'll put that in the form of a motion then. Is there a second? Second. Any question or discussion? Well, I was on that uh, board for 10 years and I was the vice chair and it does so much good work with uh, youth organizations. Um, it catches youth at some rough times of their life and gives them positive direction and uh, hands-on hands uh, education. And um, the, uh, if I'm going back on the years of information, but to keep the cost of one child in a detention facility is close to 100,000 a year. It's right at 100,000. Yes. And if you can keep, oh, it's just, if it, you can imagine the amount of money just a handful of children could, could uh, run up a bill. If you can keep them out of these facilities, it's a win-win for everybody. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's all I got to say. All right, any other questions or comments? Um, what about the other slot? You said there was two. Um, there'll be something that Ms. Baker can bring back to the board on an annual basis. And uh, um, again, the main thing about when there's appointments to this board, um, and Ms. Baker, I don't want to speak for you, but we got to make sure, obviously, whoever's appointed to the board can attend and, and be there because I know sometimes she struggles to get forms and things of that nature. And so that's the reason I want to point out you guys have five of your seven appointed, and then we'll bring those back to you. When do you normally bring that? I, I usually present the whole certification for approval to you in May. It, it, okay. It's required by the state, yeah. and we do all of that then. And it's good to keep a couple of those spots open for, for different reasons because it is hard to get people there at the time and sure. place. And Commissioner Dietz um, does a great job of attending, and he's been really involved with it as, as well. Oh, so, no, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think he's on it. I have no idea who's on it. Yeah. So. Commissioner Dietz. Stay on it since we're changing this. No. No, you, you need to stay on it. That. You need to stay on it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a good board. I was on it years ago uh, as well. I've, I've been a part of it. Commissioner Deed serves now, so it's a great board, a great opportunity. Well, and when I was at the health department, it funded my position for several years. So. Any other comments or questions? If not, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Deed. Yes. Mr. Woody? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Stribling? Yes. Chairman McMahon? Yes. Yeah, Next is item four, planning board. Commissioner Dietz, have you been able to come up with a name yet? For yes, the person that we have on there now? Yes, sir. Would like to continue to serve, and I move that we allow him to do so. Okay. So we will be reappointing Brian Barwitt. Yes. Okay. So uh, the and, um, Commissioner Deeds has made an appointment. Go ahead. Did you have a? Uh, Joyce Cooper. But I guess that's. Well, it's already been appointed. Okay. Well, I'll make a motion that we. Okay. Okay. Is there a second to that? Second. Okay. Just for clarification, and we've already voted on all the other names, correct? In December. Back in December. Oh, thank you. I forgot. Yeah, we, we voted I was on all planning, those. Yes, okay. Thank you. Okay. All right, so uh, any other questions or comments? If not, Madam Clerk? Mr. Stribling? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Woody? Yes. Mr. D? <coughs> Chairman McMahon? Yes, motion carries. Next is item five, which is the Recreation and Parks Advisory Board. You should have a letter from Director Rusty Ellis um, asking that we appoint Adam Holt, mm -hmm. uh, and he will serve on that board uh, as the representative from the Board of Education seat. This is filling a unexpired term, a vacancy. What's the pleasure of the board? I move that we appoint Adam Holt. Okay, is there a second? Second. Any question or discussion? Who is he? He's um uh he his mother was Janice Holt, who worked in schools here and then um worked at Western. She passed away. His dad was Bob Holt. He, he's over testing in the central office. Yes. He works in the central office of the schools over testing. Mm -hmm. I don't know his, his official title. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think he probably, he went to Smoky Mountain High School and Western Carolina University and 
<laughs> he married um, Kristen Hawkins. <laughs> okay, any other questions? If not, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Dietz? Yes. Commissioner Woody? Yes. yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Stribling? Yes. Yes, motion carries. Press conference, is there any press on today? Nobody's on? Okay, we'll take their questions later. Must not be. We do have need for closed session for legal 143-318-11-A-3. I have a motion to go into closed session concerning the legal. I move we go into closed session. Okay. Have a motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. We'll give them a chance.
go ahead and announce hey, that. that that might be a good outing for all us commissioners to go out and play pickleball one day. <laughs> yeah. At our work at our I'll announce that no action was taken in closed session and with that being said, is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Tom, I hope you get to feeling better. <laughs>